Hello, everyone. Welcome back again. And I'm so glad that uh, we are back together in Symbiosis 3 Weekend Events. Today, we are very excited to hear from Alex Dell. And uh, she's going to tell us about Christmas carol cards, the portal script, and the pop-up house, uh, many things that she's going to show us today. So take it away, Alex. Hey, hello. <laughs> so for me, it's good morning. Maybe you've some of you is good evening and anyway I'm going to welcome you into a little bit of winter wonderland so when I was thinking about this demonstration I was actually thinking what can I share from my project that would be quite well quite ethereal but yet something tangible that anyone could make at home and that could be actually the script so I will be sharing my screen for not a long time, I promise. I won't be too long with sharing the screen. Now you should see my presentation. Yeah, yeah, is it on? <laughs> oh, it is, I guess. It's on. So that should be the script. And um, if you don't know, I need to maybe remind you that this is all about a fairy tale that I wrote for the Out of Letters exhibition and you can still see it on the portal you can have a look at it like peek inside uh, with the help of a video so you can also hear the whole fairy tale read by me so hopefully you can uh, make yourself acquainted with it and actually there are three scripts in this book one is the whimsical like pointed pen uh, script, which I called alphabet. You can see it on the left, like on the upper part of your, oh, sorry, right, <laughs> right part of the screen. Then uh, there are those hybrid gestural sketched Lombardic capitals. And there are two variations, like a more fancy one for the start of the page and like a more sim simplified version for the text. Um, and actually, I used it in the fortune teller, so you can also have a look at it in the exhibition. And there is also this third part. It's the portal script, the one that I actually came up with especially for this book. And I thought that it's quite fairy tale like and it's playful and it goes very well with Christmas, with something also like fairy delights and all those glittery stuff that you could actually add into that script. So now we'll have a look at it a little bit. Because actually when I was thinking of how to make it, I was thinking of several characteristics that I needed to embed into it. First of all, I needed to find a voice for a fairy tale. So it's about storytelling, it's about a manuscript that I produced. And having the word manuscript in mind, the first thing that came into my mind was actually the Book of Kells. And uh, there is this very beautiful um, popular culture edition of uh, the Book of Kells, which is the beautiful cartoon, The Secret of Kells. If you haven't seen it, please do, because it is it has really incredible compositions, incredible animation. And actually, spotlight for letters. And this is really beautiful. So I thought that I should actually take something from that aesthetics. And that was, of course, the letters, the anshuls, the half anshuls, and a little bit of their like playful and rounded character. Okay. Having that in mind, I thought that I'm a storyteller and I'm a little bit like those writers. They sit down in their vintage typewriters and they type their memoirs. So my fairy tale was also a little bit of like fairy tale like memoirs because they were based on uh, a true story. And that's why I decided, OK, I need something from this aesthetics. And there is also one more thing that when we think of the typewriter script and, you know, that there are many fonts of this kind, it's highly readable. It is like either square or um, circular shape, and it's really very, very readable. So it's, it's, it's nice, actually, for a story when it can be read by other people. So I thought that, OK, I'm taking this as well. And then there should be something from me. And that is actually my handwriting. Yeah, I'm sometimes very, 
like a, a frantic writer that uh, writes very feverishly and my scribbling some, sometimes not readable. But when I can take my time, I usually make all my letters very rounded, very like, mm, really like the typewriter script or the unshot. So it has some, um, like all those three um sources of inspiration they have something in common they have those rounded shapes and I thought that okay I will dwell on that and I will go on that with that further and now I would like to show you that very script which I actually called after my fairy tale the portal and it features some stunning funny stuff so for example you can see I don't know whether yeah you can see my uh pointer yeah uh so the word elf, which is on the second line from the top, you can see a small flower on the letter L. So I thought that maybe I could add something more to those letters. Of course, adding something to every letter would be a lot too much. It will be way too crowded and like uh, no noisy. So I thought that there will be just one word in the whole story that will have this special flourish, that flower, and that will be the word elf because well that's the main character and also I changed some of the words with drawings that's very nice actually tradition that comes from childhood and maybe you remember those fairy tale stories in childhood I think we all had them when there was the text and some of the words were interchanged with um, drawings and this is what I did with my um, story so I think that it would be actually very nice if my script maybe uh, makes it into your Christmas cards and maybe you could also change some words with drawings that would be that would be quite nice so this is actually the alphabet itself and as you can see it has just a lowercase you could ask why well that's because I also have that uh, hybrid Lombardi capitals and actually they play the role of um, the capitals so that's why the script has just the lowercase well you can always invent something else and uh, as far as the instruments that we will be using today are concerned, it's just something very, very basic. So you can use anything that produces a monoline, a usual pen, a gel pen, marker, liner. Well, I will be using my fountain pen, which I really love. And I was actually writing my whole story with a fountain pen. So why not use this? And of course, we will need some space for practicing our letters. And that will be a Christmas card for today. So I've written a small, small extract from A Christmas Carol to show you how it can be done with the help of my letters. You can either screenshot it or, or maybe I can send you those pictures if you want to and you can drop me just a message and I will do it. And of course, we will need to go to writing. That's just the time. So I will stop sharing my screen. And now I think I will ask Dorothy to spotlight another version of me. <laughs> this one with my hands. <laughs> because I think it will be a little bit more important than my face. Yes, thank you. Still my face is here and I'm waving to you and sending you hearts and everything. <laughs> but this is like more important. Now, first, we will start with thinking how to write on and what to write on. You can use just a very ordinary exercise book. So if you have one at home, you can use this or just any paper that you have that is at least slightly lined. Also, if you want my small guide sheets that I have for this uh, class, you can either drop me a message or maybe we could share it somehow in another manner. But the thing is that you don't need anything special, actually. Just straight lines, that's all. My X height is just three millimeters, so it's not a lot. Oh, sorry, maybe I should change for another. Um, oops, yeah. <laughs> that's something so familiar to any calligrapher, I think. <laughs> when everything goes uh, like in splashes. And uh, there is, one more thing that I need, oops, 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 yeah, I would like to zoom in a little bit. So my script actually can totally fit into a small square, which makes it very, very easy 
and very understandable and very, I don't know, typewriter style or something like that. So um, we will be looking at letters in groups, just according to their similarities. And that would be much easier for us to understand the script. So we'll actually start with simple ovals, nothing too complicated. So we have the square here and we can absolutely easily make a letter O. Yay! I'm just, yeah, <laughs> morning shaky hands a little bit. Oh, yes. Then I've got the letter A. And for me, it is very important to make the letter A like quite funny and nice. And yeah, I could make it just with the addition of some mm, one uh, stroke uh, to the right. But I decided to make a funny letter A. Letter A that is two story version. And I really like it because I'm just adding a little bit of uh, a circle then a straight line and a small tail, and that's all. And I've got this fancy letter with a short ascender, and that's really nice. And all my students know that this is my favorite, actually, type of letter A. The letter C is very, very easy. Uh, the only, like, not complicated, but a peculiar thing about it is that when you have three quarters of a circle, then you are adding connecting stroke oh my god my my uh, pens are against me today <laughs> i don't know why so you need to make a connection stroke that goes outwards then the next letter oh this is my favorite one actually this is a letter e it has a very small circle on the top and you first draw this circle then again three quarters of circle and then an exit stroke that goes either like this, if it's just like um, in uh, um, inside of, or at the end, well, yeah, at the end of the word, or it may go a little bit higher if you need to connect it to other letters. Then, uh, well, the next letter is technically not one of the simple ovals, but still it is very, very much related to the letter E. It's the letter R. When we have a very small circle, well, half of a circle actually, then a straight line, then half of the letter E at the top, and then it's actually half of a circle again, and this is the letter R. So these two are really very related. Just the thing is that when you're making this small circle, you need to pay attention so that it doesn't turn into a block. You need to make it quite open so that it has some white space inside. Then I've got my favorite letters. They are, I'm calling them like punched letters because it feels like they are pinched. And uh, it's very, actually very, very similar, letters, simple letters. And the thing is that they remind me of the half anshuls and anshuls a lot. Because when I'm making this half circle, I'm drawing it not to the baseline, but right below it. And then small short line going horizontally and then a little circle like i don't know it's like um one fourth of a circle then a similar letter is the letter m which is also based on like half circle then straight line then again half circle and then we're doing a circle but a little bit little bit bigger so that we can reach below the baseline and then this small leg that will be connecting to other letters. So these letters are pinched somewhere below the line, but we are also having some letters that are pinched somewhere at the X height. And those are first the letter U that really looks a lot like the letter N. But the thing is that we're just having this straight line not going higher than the X height. It's right in this territory of the x height then it's again three quarters of a circle and then a straight line with a small small tail and this is also very very reminiscent of anshuls and half anshuls then there is oh that's my favorite group i think everyone loves those diagonal letters because they're sometimes so tricky and so strange so first we are having a small small half circle on the outer side 
Then a small diagonal that goes in the middle of our imaginary square. And then there is a little curved line that goes also touching the X height and then having the straight line, which we had actually here. And we had it here, but here it ended with a little bit of a curve. Here it's not ending with a curve because we already have something curved. Then there is actually this wonderful, wonderful letter, letter W that is very similar to the letter V because it has just the same beginning. But when we're having this second stroke, it doesn't go to the X height. It ends a little bit, a little bit lower. And then we have actually something very similar to the letter U, but just reversed this part, the first part. So we have part of a circle which touches the X height and then goes to the front with just a straight line. So nothing too complicated. <laughs> then there is this, ah, oh, this is very actually um, simple and quite funny because it's the letter X always so seemingly complicated, but very, very simple. We start with the diagonal. Then there is a little bit of a half circle. And again, something just the same as we had in the letter W. Just the same motion. It's just not um, half of a circle. Now it's a compound curve that ends also uh, with a straight line. Then the last letter actually of this type is the letter Y. And the letter Y is just the continuation of the letter V. So we have a little bit of a circle, then a diagonal, and then the uh, other thing that we will be doing. So it will be not just a curve that goes from uh, down to up. It goes actually in the other direction and it's already a compound curve, not just a curve. And here, at the bottom, we will be having actually half of a circle. And again, we're ending with a short straight line that goes horizontally. Yeah, that's this very easy and uh, not uncomplicated group. The next group that we're having is actually, well, descenders and ascenders. We'll start with ascenders. And I will start with the letter L just to show you how I decided to form my ascenders. So it's one quarter of a circle, then a straight line, and then half of a circle, and that's it. And here, actually, you can make some, I don't know, funny stuff with this thing. When I was writing my elf, I was uh, giving this part a small flower. But the thing is that, actually, I made the length of ascenders one and a half as much as the X height. And it's not much for some decorations. So if you want to add some decorations, I would say that you will have to adjust the height of your ascender. So for example, if I make this high, the L, then I can add flower because it will be like higher than the line higher than the ascenders and descenders and it won't be interfering with the word and this is actually what we want from any decoration so for christmas i think maybe uh, the flower should be interchanged with some kind of a star or something like that because well it's christmas after all so it's, it's not about flowers this time sorry <laughs> not, not the proper time of the year uh, so the next letter also very very easy the same thing quarter of a circle, then straight line, and then a proper circle to form the letter B. Nothing complicated. The letter D is just almost the same as the letter B, but there is just one thing that is added, and this is a short tail. Yeah, so it's nothing complicated. Then, oh, this is actually one of my favorite letters, the letter H. This is just something that we did for the letter N, but we're just adding the ascender. The thing is that you can actually make this short descent, I mean this leg, you can make it like longer and bigger. It's just that I decided that, that I don't need that much polarism in my line. So I decided to make this uh, like um, short, very short descent that is just, just below the uh, baseline, not no, not more, nothing, nothing too fancy, just something very, very silent, like, like Silent Night. Yeah. <laughs> then there is the letter K, which I also love a lot. And you can actually pay attention to the fact that I'm writing in a very, very slow manner, because 
this is not a script that hurts. It's just something to be really slow about. And it's like you, I don't know, put on a candle and something scented and you're enjoying your evening and you're writing your Christmas cards. So this is the script for that. And there is no hurry for writing Christmas cards. You know, you want to enjoy every second of it because this is something really very positive. So now we need a small, small diagonal also with a curve. And then it's actually a very, very small compound curve that ends with half a circle. And again, if you need to connect two other letters, you can make it longer. Then there is the letter T. Oh, I love it because it is very small. It has a very short uh, ascender. And what I really love it uh, about it is the crossbar, because it is very short on the right, and it's longer on the, oh, sorry, on the left. It's short on the left and long on the right. And this is also something that I had from the Anshuls, and I really love it. That, oh, this is such a small detail, but it still has like this wink to history. Uh, so this is actually my last letter of the ascending uh, type. And there is one more letter that is somewhere on the crossroads of uh, ascenders and descenders. This is the beautiful letter F. I really love it. So quarter of a circle, long straight line, and again, quarter of a circle. And again, we have the same crossbar as the letter T being really quite long. If you need, or your composition demands, you can always make this part longer like more fanciful and that's okay yeah it can be adjusted totally to your ideas and to the image of your writing so now we come to descenders ah i love it the easiest and simplest of them is actually the letter j and we're having just very very small circle here very small like half of the x height and ending with a very easy and like nothing fanciful um, descender that looks just exactly like the ascender. So uh, the next letters are quite also, well, logical and nothing too fancy about the letter Q. You know that its descender goes to the other part, so it looks to the right, not to the left. That's its like characteristic trait. Then there is the letter P which according like to history always have a very short ascender and a short well quite quite a normal normal descender oh then comes actually my favorite letter because i love the letter g most of all and i decided that i won't make it like with a standard descender i will make it like this two star story version first it has this small like feather <laughs> on top and I will show you two versions like a more round one which ends just with half a circle and a more narrow one if you don't have enough space for all the like circular stuff it's like very very small like the number eight something looking in that time so the same letter but actually different character. This is like a snowman and this is um, like an icicle. Yeah, something <laughs> looking very much like an icicle. And the last letter of the descender group, well, one of them we already had. And the last one is the letter uh, Z. Actually, I was thinking that maybe I should make it just circular and nothing special, but then I thought that no, 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 I need to make it funny. So I decided to make it like with a roof, a little bit horizontal, then a little bit of straight line, then rounded stuff, and then coming the descender, very much like with the letter Y, but just the letter Y is looking to the right and the letter Z is looking to the left. So we have just several letters left. And this is uh, something, well, uh, the unique and queer letters. The letter I is very much like the letter J, nothing too, well, unique maybe about it, but still it doesn't fit into any of the groups. And the last letter, oh, I think it goes well with 2024 because maybe you know that this will be the year of a dragon. And to me, the letter S looks very much like a serpent or a dragon awakening. Yeah, 
you can make it absolutely symmetrical. But for me, actually, when I was writing the text, that was nothing about symmetry. Because when I'm connecting it to some letter going um, like before letter S, then I'm making the lower part a little bit longer so that I could actually connect this letter. When this letter goes at the very end of the word, then its upper part sometimes becomes longer just for, uh, you know, flourishing reasons, just to make it like more fanciful. So yeah, nothing complicated, nothing too special like to think about. And um, maybe I just wanted to write like several words uh, for you to see the connections. Yes, of course you saw my like Silent Night uh, theme that I was writing before and you could see in the presentation and we'll get back to it, but maybe I should write some word. Do you, is there any word that you would like me to write? Something or I will choose myself. <laughs> Dorothy, okay, I will... Dorothy. Dorothy, uh, I need to have the uppercase letter. <laughs> Okay. Then, then I will be inventing a letter D. I don't know. I'm sorry. This will be just my invention. Also something very, very slow. And it will be like... Oh. Oh. And I think I need to put a little star in here. Yeah, that will be very, very <laughs> Christmas-like. There is the letter O. When I'm connecting letters, sometimes I like to go like over the X height, but sometimes I like to stay within the X height, and this is also nice. So, oh yeah, this is like I'm in the center of the screen, adjusting. Sorry. Very, very slowly. Just imagine that you are writing for your nearest and dearest. You don't want to hurry. And I'm speaking too much while writing. And that's why it's being complicated for me. Yeah, and here it's actually an interesting part that um, if I would be writing, I would be actually doing this. I will be connecting all the words with my crossbar just because I like it, just because it, to me, it looks fanciful. Then there is the letter H that goes below the baseline. Oh, and this is my favorite letter Y. I really love it. It has this very unique character and I love this diagonal and I love this ending and actually I think it looks really nice to make a sm one more small stuff. <laughs> so this is yeah I think you could make some decorations with the letter and uh, maybe I will be adding something more but I will like to introduce you actually to the postcard because I still need to show you the pop-up. Maybe if we have, <laughs> thank you. If we have uh, enough time, I will be writing a little bit more of the text and maybe something, something else. But I want to show you something that I made also for you to practice on. And this is the pop-up card. So first, we will be still, starting with uh, the construction. What it takes to make this card with a pop-up um, pop house. Oh, I had it somewhere just a second. Oh my God, my pop-up house decided to run away from me. <laughs> He's very, ah, okay, I see it now, yes. So it can actually be of different sizes. What I'm doing here is just an a5 part piece of paper that I folded in half and this is the base for my card. Then you can have actually the house of very different sizes but this one you can see that three of its quarters is the same height as my base. You can also I can uh, send you my uh, guide shades and the uh, house that I actually drew for uh, this class so that you won't have to experiment with the sizes. So please drop me a message and I will be really happy to share my files with you. And the thing is that you can see that the house is very, very simple. So oh, if we want to have very exact measurements, so this is like five and a half. 
centimeters and this is like three and a half centimeters and we will need to have like three tabs here to glue it all together to have the house so actually we can do it right now i'm really i'm not kind of not too lazy with the glue but the glue sometimes makes my paper wrinkled that's why i don't like it and that's why i prefer the uh the tape just the double-sided tape and it makes everything very very neat so now a very important thing comes this is the placement of the house because you need to put your house in such a way that two of your tabs will be first at 90 degrees to each other, two of the sides of the house, and then each of the sides needs to be 45 degrees to the folding line. This is very important for the construction actually to work. But then comes another question. For example, if I put my house here, then when I'll be closing my card, you will have this mm, not very neat part. I think it's, it's, it's not good to do that. So I need to place my house somewhere in this territory so that it won't be sticking out and it will be quite nicely covered here. So I'm doing it in such a manner that I am trying how it will be lying when it will be actually closed. This is the most important part. So again, I'm checking that it's 45 degrees to the folding line. This line is 45 degrees. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite okay. Seems quite okay. Then I'm closing my card. Where is my folding bone? Yeah, here it is. Doing like this and woohoo, magic. <laughs> that's very easy. And actually that's a classical construction that is everywhere, all over the internet. So it's nothing too complicated, but I think it's very nice to, for example, decorate it a little bit. And when I was doing my house for this card, I decided that I want to add a little bit of light inside of it. So I decided to have it gold lift. This was actually um, not a successful attempt, as you can see, because the glue for the gold leaf is very sticky, very, very sticky. And if anything goes to it, and if anything touches it, then that's all. Everything is glued together. Just uh, for you to know that I'm using this very glue. It's, it's quite okay. Yeah, it's quite nice. And um, so for me, it was really interesting to have this idea of a window. And you can peek through the window and have a look at the house and see that it's full of light. And you can experiment with it. And you can draw, I don't know, maybe some paintings on the wall or create some, some art inside of the house. Maybe some sumiguashi pattern or whatever. You can do whatever you like. It's really nice. It's your house. It's your home. You can experiment. Then I decided that I need something sweet for the roof. And at first I experimented with artificial snow. <laughs> it appeared to be <laughs> too big and too huge for this card. So it doesn't look nice really. But simple glitter looks absolutely perfect. You can see that it's like frosted roof. It, it looks really nice. It shimmers. It's funny. It's nice. So yeah, yeah I decided that that's, that's a good idea. And then, so we come back to this construction. And of course you need to prepare all the decorations before you glue the house because otherwise it won't be possible actually to do it. But then you actually need somehow to attach your roof. Oh, it's not holding just by itself, unfortunately. Um, that would be nice <laughs> if it could be. But we need a roof beam. And here you need to also to analyze the house that you have. So why you when you're closing the card, actually everything changes. All the parts change their positions. But there are two points that are stable, and these are these points. So you need to look for the central axis of this um, wall and this wall. And when you have your roof beam, so you have four tabs to stick to the walls, two of them, and two to stick to the roof. So when you're sticking the roof beam to the walls, you need to look for the center of the wall and have it right in the very middle. Yeah, oh, sorry, no, <laughs> didn't quite get glued. And this one, 
just the same. And have a look at my tabs. Yeah, they're here. They are on the same side for me. It's it's uh, it's quite easy. Yeah, and when I'm closing my house, everything goes well. Yeah, nothing got stuck. Yes, yes, it's working. Wow. Now I have my two tabs to glue to the roof, and it's also quite easy. So on my um, guide sheets, you will see that there are some marks, but if you don't make the marks, it doesn't matter. The only thing that you need to remember about this roof, that it has to be a little bit bigger than the house, so that also it doesn't get stuck. It needs to be a little bit outside of the walls. So uh, you remember that we have five and a half centimeters white house and three and a half centimeters the other side. And here we have six centimeters, I think six and two millimeters. And here, um, six and a half or one part will be like three and three centimeters. Now we will have to place this roof in the center yes and we will glue it like all together when we close the card again use our folding bone from both sides yay and now we have the house yes <laughs> this is fantastic now of course you can plan beforehand where you want to have your text because when you have this house first of all of course you need to place the house and then you will be dancing around it and you can do the diagonal thing or you can just write the text in here it just depends on you do whatever you think most suitable and nice and of course everything depends on your idea how big you want to have the house you want to have like a four card or a five or a six so it depends on you and when i was making my card i was thinking that okay I want to have this text and I want to have it in gold and it has some restrictions because I'm using this um, quickie glue. It's very nice. It's like a gel pen, but when it just gets dried, you can apply gold leaf to it or I don't know, glitter or whatever. And it's, it's really very nice, but it demands a big X height. So it can't do three millimeters because everything just will get blurred and it will be just one very thick golden line. Um, I had four millimeters X height, but I think you can make actually five or six. It will be maybe even um, better. So having uh, this, I, I tried, yeah, I, I tried actually writing on A5 uh, with uh, this like bigger X height, but it, it occupied just too much space and I couldn't fit my house anywhere. So that's why I decided to make a bigger base, this A4 thing. And uh, when I wrote part of the Christmas Carol, I actually understood that I don't have space and I have these two lines and two other lines will be just sticking out of the card. So I thought, okay, I will change it for a flourish. And you can see here a star that is somewhere around between the clouds. So yeah, it fits quite well with the story, why not? And when I was actually, I think I should show you a little bit of this um, wiki glue, how just it works, because it's a nice instrument and I really love it. And I will be writing a very simple word. I think I will be just writing this elf stuff, but just with a star to make it more Christmas-like. And as I have already said, you can adjust freely the length of your um, ascenders and descenders. So here I have quite a huge ascender. So my second ascender will be shorter. Whoop, and maybe I will add a little bit of uh, circular form to it. So yeah, it's blue first when you're writing, but when it dries down, it becomes almost transparent. So you can understand when it's uh, dry quite easily. 
Yeah, I think it's my inner magpie that gets in the way all the time because when I'm making something, my inner magpie say, says that, oh, there is something shiny and glittery. You need to use it, please, immediately. So yeah, now I'm, that's why I'm using gold lip so often. <laughs> I just love it. So while we're waiting for this word to dry, I need to comment a little bit on uh, the other part that I did here. So when I was doing it, actually, my original concept was to make a white on white card. Yeah, this is what I have. And at first I wanted, yeah, this roof, of course, covered with glitter and this golden light. By the way, I have golden light inside of the house and golden light right in front of the house. So this is actually the shine that comes from the house. So it's all thought through. It's, they're, they're nothing, nothing is just by chance. <laughs> And when I had my result with the white and white, I thought that, mm, okay, my gold is not actually a color. For me, it's just light. And I don't have color here. So maybe I should add some contrast. And I decided that I will make some contrast by adding a little bit of the night sky. And this is how actually I just made this collage just to make it stand out so that this house with this shine will be just really well seen on um, this background. And I think almost, almost, almost dried out. Uh, what I need to tell you about this wicker glue. This is actually a very funny thing. Yeah, it's, it's very nice and it works even on plastic and sometimes it even works on glass, not on all surfaces. But if you make them like uh, non-greasy, then I think it will work. But the thing is that when it's dried and when you have already written it, you have like some, I don't know, two minutes to fix something if something is wrong and you can erase it with a just usual eraser. So it's very, very, um, on the one hand, it's very easy, but on the other hand, if you have the guidelines on your sheet of paper, oh, <laughs> that will be a trick because when you will be erasing the guidelines, actually you may erase everything that you have written. And this is not nice. So I'm really offering you another way of transferring your text to the paper with the quicker glue. And it's better to use the light pad because otherwise just, Pencil might get in the way, and it's not the best option, I'm afraid. So I think this is actually almost, yeah, I think it's it's already okay. And we will be adding a little bit of the gold leaf to this word, just to see how it looks like. And what I like about this quicker glue, that it gives quite a nice feeling of being a little bit elevated. Of course, it's not this um, proper elevated stuff for the gilding, but it still has a little bit of elevating element. And at first I'm just, just stepping with my finger and checking that everything is well glued. Yes, yes, I think everything is well glued. So then I will take a little bit of my brush and just remove all the unnecessary stuff it's already quite well glued and it's very nice to yay, yay, yay when there are some small elements that are well not coming off i'm just using my knife to remove all the excess gold leaf yay and here we come Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I think it's still um, I needed to have a little bit of more time. So when you're doing it by yourself, I really, really highly recommend you to be very patient and to wait for maybe some uh, five minutes because my star got a little bit smudged. Yeah, not the nicest thing, but I can just show you that it's very shiny. It's a little bit elevated. Yes, I needed to fix that. Not very nice, but I can show you what how it worked like with those small letters. You can see that they are a tiny little bit elevated, like a tiny little bit over the paper. And here just as well, these are a little bit more. So these are 
three millimeters X side, and you can see that it's not the best size for them. And these are four millimeters, and this is already quite okay. And you can see on the star, so it had a, a lot of glue, and it feels also a little bit going over the paper, and it's really nice. So, uh, what I actually wanted to say by all this, the thing is that sometimes we have really very, very simple symbols. And uh, for example, uh, there is even this field of science, learning this, like the um, history of symbols, semiotics call, it's called. Yeah, and sometimes when we draw something very simple, like a flower on our house, it might have a very, very uh, like, um, the form is so familiar to us that we don't actually pay attention to something that is inside of it, like to the meaning of it. And with this very simple house, I actually wanted to say that a home might be your guiding star. So it's somewhere in the stars. And this is actually probably my wish for everyone for Christmas, because Sometimes it happens uh, in such a manner that even being at home, we feel lost, we feel insecure, we don't feel fulfillment, and we lose this concept of home, which is definitely not always a place, but more of an idea that we have. And this idea is the guiding star that is leading us to the safe place, the good place, and sometimes our guiding star might be covered with fog, with clouds, we don't see it. And what I want to wish for everyone this Christmas and for the coming year, that even despite the fact that your guiding star might be covered at this moment, I would like to wish you enough courage and trust to know and to believe that it is there and that it will guide you. So Merry Christmas and thank you so much. <laughs> That's a heart to everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. My goodness, you did so many things all within 48 minutes. My word. Yeah, thank I you. I can still too. write something more. <laughs> Yeah, very, very There's actually mm -hmm. a very, very nice quote about Christmas that I was thinking for a long time, and I really love it. Uh, it comes from Grinch, but maybe Christmas is not something that you, you can buy from a store. Maybe Christmas is just a little bit more. Nice, very nice. Does anybody have questions for Alex? <laughs> Merry oh, Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are comments. You can take a look. Uh, Tatiana says that your workshop is like a little mini fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. actually, yes, that was something that I was saying before the recording started. And I want to say it one more time because I want to say a huge, huge thank you to Tatiana for supporting me, even though she was going herself through some very hard period of time, she found enough love to, <laughs> to share with me. And I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we will meet uh, definitely <laughs> in reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm planning to go to Krakow uh, maybe next year. So we will definitely meet. <laughs> I have a very friendly dog and a very friendly couch, so you are most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh. just really very grateful for all of this program and all of the people who are here for being so friendly, for being so nice to me and just, just actually for being friendly to each other because when I see this absolutely friendly community when everyone is sharing and everyone is just saying good words to 
everyone. I will find time to write to everyone. I'm just a little bit short on energy, but I will find my inner resources and I will definitely write to everyone because everyone is incredible and all the pieces, all the works, everything that people are doing and sharing in this beautiful, very generous manner. This is incredible. And I'm really grateful to Dorothy for just making it possible, making it real uh, to my absolutely incredible most, I don't know, fairy tale mentor Anne for being here beside me. And yesterday I was just writing to her that I'm dying. <laughs> I don't have much strength. <laughs> and she was supporting me like, do it, you can do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, you are welcome, Alex. <laughs> I, I loved your presentation. I love the the energy, your enthusiasm, and this presentation sh shows how much uh, talent you have. You are a very good calligrapher, but you are a very good teacher. It was, uh, you're a creator, you're a storyteller, you're all in one, uh, you're a hard worker. Um, and it was all your knowledge about letters you put into your stories in your writing in your way of living in your trying for for happiness and to see the light in your in your life it's all there okay. and it is also very well prepared i think it show you it shows how you you are working and how you combine so many things so much meanings in just one project or or in this project um, I never saw you teaching, but I'm, I admired seeing you, how your enthusiasm is going to your students. So keep on teaching, keep on giving the, the good vibes to your students. They will like it and they will keep going with, with the ideas and, and enjoy the, uh, the writing of letters. So thank you. keep going. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's no, wonderful. It's just, all around. It, wonderful. It's your example that keeps going, uh, keeps me going because you mm. create so much, you study so much all the time. This is this is really fantastic. You just put so much of yourself into your art. This is so beautiful. Thank you. Okay. I, I don't know. I just admire it, and I think it's uh, just. I, I think I was telling you that at the very beginning when we just met in January that. I think that Belgium is a heaven for calligraphers because you all meet in reality <laughs> and you are like all communicating. And this is just so beautiful. This is so incredible. And I'm happy that we have this opportunity to meet at least on Zoom. Yeah. And maybe in reality someday, I don't know. Yes. Please. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's true that we have in Belgium a lot of, good very good calligraphers good friends we are living very close to each other so we know each other we can stimulate each other we don't have all the same style of calligraphy but that's not the essence i think we in one or another way we we stimulate each other to to go on and to keep yeah to keep going to have the the communities in Flanders and in in the French part of Belgium as well, and um, I think that makes it um, a good place to to be as a calligrapher. Yeah, you are feel supported by by everyone or by others. Uh, even you can disagree about the calligraphy or or about the teaching or about the subject, but yeah. I think it's, it's actually I, I what I really love when people are different and still they come together. This is so beautiful because it's like coming over all the differences and being together. This is this is yeah. this is incredible. This is what I really love. And yeah. there is one thing maybe that also this project of mine taught me and maybe it could be also helpful for other people that um, well, it's it's basically not very much about art, but that's about the fact that our trauma does not define us. 
and we are so much more than our trauma this is yeah. just one small piece yes and we need to like accept it and live in it sometimes and live through it but it still is not us and i think that it's just showing in many of artists projects and also within the art of letters that people are going through hard periods and still they can, can create beauty and this is amazing yeah when it, it, that's uh, also the lesson from Vincent van Gogh and there is uh, also one beautiful film about him and there was one phrase about him that he's maybe one of the greatest people on earth because he could transform this his pain the pain of his tormented life into exquisite beauty and mm. i wish that we like like people and like artists so we create beauty out of everything it's like we create flowers on hard soil and on bad soil and still those are flowers and I hope that we will be able to do that together yes. <laughs> with the help right. of each other. Yeah. <laughs> You're on your way, so you must go on. Yeah, well said. Well said, <laughs> Alex, well said. I think, you know, for people who are not, you know, going through uh, difficult times, it's very easy to philosophize. But when you are right smack in the middle of it, you know, what you're saying, it comes out of the depths of your own experience. And uh, yeah, so Alex, you have been so brave, very, very brave. And and I, I think that you did good. You know, it's not over, the, the growing, uh, the adapting, the building a new home. And there are some seasons of grieving when you are saying goodbye to things that you have loved. And um then maybe life will never be the same again. But you have, you come to terms with those things. And, and then it becomes a new part of you, a part of your new history and experience. So I'm just very thankful for you in the program. I mean, you, despite everything that you've been through, you are a powerhouse of creativity. You are a volcano. <laughs> like, come on, man, and all the ideas and uh, oh my goodness you produce so many things in uh just just for symbiosis there's like seven things that you've listed so guys you know go to the website look at alex um things and I, I think you might see that there is a thread of like um the theme about home you know what is home looking for home coming home to yourself and 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 that is really a part of what alex is going through and i think it's such a milestone um all these are very milestone creations because she's never going to come this way again these are all just very very fresh and in the midst of all that pain she created all this art for us to share i really think that we owe it to her to appreciate uh, and to you know support and uh, buy her stuff <laughs> take it home with you keep it in your on your desk you know think of her and uh, be inspired Alex, it's just such a joy to have you. Thank you so much. Oh, actually, I was thinking that maybe I could drop the files into chat, um, into the chat. Yes, oh, yeah, yes. Do Let's oh, do just a second, just a tiny little second, please. Yes, that's what uh, we were saying, yeah, that you can drop the files into chat. Yes, the mm. two PDF. Yes. So the one with the alphabet, the one with guide shapes, and uh, the one with the house. Yes. So you won't have to do it yourself. You can just print it out, then cut it out and yes. decorate it the way you want. But I yes. think that it will be much easier. So yeah, I need to press the send button. Yeah. Is it, it works. Oh yeah, there it goes. All right. In the chat, there are the PDFs that Alex has generously shared with us. So thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. Well, we are on the hour. So I'm going to uh, stop the recording now. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And please do go and visit the exhibition and catch up with uh, them on Instagram as well, the artisan. Bye. Bye.